everybody. It is Christy finally back with a Mixed Media Monday project or inspiration for you today. I'm so excited. It's been such a long time. I hope that you guys are well and I hope that you guys can uh, create something beautiful today. Um, I am thankful that you're here, but I need you to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and hit the, the heart and the like button so that uh, you can let YouTube know that you are liking the stuff that we're putting out. Then if you hit the bell notification button, it will tell you when a new um, video is posted here on the Paper Issues YouTube channel. So let's get started. I am going to play today with the Distress Mica Stains. This is the Halloween bundle that you can find in the shop. And uh, yeah, I've never played with Mica Stains before, but we're gonna do it today. Um, I'm going to start by just gently, let's see, I can get it to pump to work. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so we're just going to spray um, some of the colors. We have, this one is called Hocus Pocus. And like always, I will leave the link to all the products in the description box below so that you can check them out. And um, be sure to use... MM Monday to get 20% off your total purchase, y'all. Oh, these are so cool. The shimmer in this is so good. All right, so I think a lot of times when people use this, they are using it with like another medium. So maybe some a modeling paste or something to give it a little dimension. But I just thought I would play around and see what these colors look like and give you guys some inspiration to pull out the mica sprays and use them because I know that we all have our Tim Holtz goodies and we're obsessed with all the things but this one doesn't want to work um they don't do us any good if we're not taking them out to use them this one is called jack-o-lantern but it is not there it comes oh wow look at the color what all right so and then the last color so we had bubbling cauldron which is the green hocus focus which is the purple jack-o-lantern which is that um pretty orange color and then this one is called crooked broomstick so i am just gonna take it and mist a little tiny bit of brown right in those spaces all right so i am going to let this dry and then i will be back to show you some more things that you can do to add to this beautiful combination actually let me spray some water before i do that i do want to move it move it to move around wow gorgeous 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 so the thing that I would encourage you to do if you have products that you're afraid to use is to just play. You can see like the, the movement of that. Isn't that so cool? Is just play around. You're going to get a more, um, like the color is going to move when you do that. Let me get a paper towel and dry it off. Let's see, I don't want it to be too discolored. So yeah, this picks up a lot of the color. Wow, that is such a pretty, wow, so good. All right, so um, let's see what else we can do to this beautiful little thing here. I did pull out some of my Distress Oxides because I thought I would use the blending um brushes and add some more it's really wet though so i have to let this bad boy dry that is just so cool look at that all right so let's get the this is gathered twigs and i'm gonna get my foam blender um I don't know if you guys have used the foam blenders a lot, but they're just like the blending brushes. The thing that you want to remember when you're using them 
is to start off the page. I just want to do the edges to make this more like vintage looking, if that makes sense. Remember how we used to, in the scrapbooking, like take the ink to the edges of our <laughs> pattern paper to age it? This is kind of the same concept, but I just want to make it more aged so that, you know, getting that antiquated, look at how cool that looks, just adding that little bit of gathered twigs. Now you can use any of the browns. There's a lot of browns in the family um, of Distress Oxides. I will link what um, is in the Paper Issues store below so that you can check them out. Um, but yeah, you could use any of the browns depending on the look you're going for. So that is Gathered Twigs, not quite as dark as some of the other ones, kind of the middle of the road look let me show you the shimmer on this guy look at the shimmer that is the mica stain in essence all right let me pull out some more um some stamps and we will add some more texture to this all right so i pulled out the grime layering stencil by tim holtz and this Studio Light Grunge Collection Clear Stamps, which is actually one of my favorite, most favorite stamp sets. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the gathered twigs and go along here. Now, I'm not going to go really, really dark because I still want to see the color from the mica spray underneath. So I'm going to do some of these out here, the dots, little splatters but I don't want it to be too, yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, and then I might do like a little smattering. This is what I find with mixed media, you guys. In order to get the cohesive look, you do wanna carry it across the page and elements of the page, okay? So that's why I did this little smattering over here. And then I'm gonna take it here to the top of the page and do a little bit more. Not a ton, just enough to carry the elements across the page. So I really like how that looks. Now I'm gonna get my stamp set out and figure out how to add a little more grunge to this page. I'm probably gonna still stick with the browns. So let me pull a couple ink pads and get back to it. All right, so I pulled out some of my favorite inks that I like to use and these amazing Fiskars stamp blocks. So I think I'm gonna start with this guy here and I think I'm just gonna put him there. I think I'm gonna use some black and I can always go over the top of it to mute it out, so. One of the things that is important when you're stamping is if you have a bigger stamp, this is not a bigger stamp to me, but if you do have a bigger stamp, the best thing to do to do is to take the pad to the stamp as opposed to like this. This is the stamp to the pad, but when you get the bigger stamp sets, it's hard to navigate that so it's easier to take the ink pad pick it up and take it to the stamp when you have a bigger stamp so look at how cute that looks some grunge i'm going to add maybe just a little part of the outside edge here Remember, when you do the mixed media, to start with less because once you put it on there, there is no way to take it off. So if you like how it looks, you could always add more, but you cannot add less. So I'm going to use this stamp, and this is like the little bubbles, and use my gathered twigs, and let's see what we can do. I'm going to make a little 
Oh, that looks cute. It reminds me of like a cauldron, you know? So the cauldron bubbles up. So I'm gonna do more of that actually. I'm gonna do it all down the bottom of the page because I like the way it reminds me of the Halloween -y, Halloween spirit. So now the cauldron is bubbling up the page. So freaking cute. I really like these mica sprays. So yeah, now you have a gorgeous Halloween inspired card. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of the mica spray and I'm gonna spray it on top of this because I do wanna mute some of that out. Trying to match the elements that were already in place on the page. That's what I love about these products is that you can go over them however many times you would like and get different effects. So I'm gonna dry this up too. So now you see how the mica goes right over the top of the stamp and kind of mutes it out a little bit. Good stuff right there. All right, what else, what else, what else? Maybe some of this jack-o'-lantern on the bottom. I probably spend far too long on this kind of stuff, but it really brings me so much joy. I'm just saying, I enjoy, I enjoy the elements. One of the things that was Tim Holtz went over in his live is if you decide to shake these up to hold the cap, because as you can see, they do sometimes leak. So you're gonna wanna do that. Don't do, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pat that up, pat that up. Add some more of this there. Yeah, if you add it on top, that's a really nice element. So if you add it on top, it kind of mutes that back out. So I'm just going back over the top with all the colors that I've already used. I'm gonna dry it up. And you're gonna get so much shimmer. Can you see the shimmer in that? So good. So yeah, those are the Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stains. They are completely different than the Oxides or the regular Distress Spray Stains. They definitely have a different element, a little bit of shimmer. They layer well. They're not as opaque as the oxides, but you get so much shimmer. Look at that. That's, a, that's so, I love it. So yeah, I used the Distress Mica Stains, the Halloween collection. I used the Studio Light Grunge Clear Stamps and I used the Tim Holtz Grime Layering Stencil. All of the products that I used will be linked in the description box below. If you decide to shop, make sure to use code MMMONDAY to save 20% off your total purchase. And um, We will be back again. We're going to be changing things up a little bit, but we will keep you posted on when we'll be back again with another Mixed Media Monday layout or inspiration. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you guys have a fantastic day. And please, if you love what you see here, please hit that um, thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you like the content here. But also, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button so that next time we post a scrappy Mixed Media Monday inspiration, you will be notified straight to your devices. Thank you so much, and I'm going to post some close-ups for you to see. 
I will see you again soon. Have a fantastic week, y'all. Bye.